Hey guys, it's Taylor. Today's Beauty University video is all about foundations. We're going to be talking about various different types of foundations, how to apply them, stuff like that. I am not showing you my foundation routine in this video just because I did film a very, very recent foundation routine. So I will have that video linked down below for you guys so you can see it. But today we're just going to be talking about different products and I'm going to be showing you um, different brushes that I like to use with things and stuff like that. So this is hopefully not going to be as long as some of the other videos that I've done. I'm gonna to try to get through everything kind of quickly, but yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please keep watching if you want to learn about foundations. So I've basically separated foundations into three different categories. We're going to be going over true liquids, we're going to be going over like cream products, and we're going to be talking about powder products as well. So I'm going to start with the liquids, move to the creams, and then the powders. So the first product in the liquids category is a tinted moisturizer. Basically, a tinted moisturizer is exactly what it sounds like. It is a regular face moisturizer with a little bit of color to it. This offers very, very sheer coverage. It really doesn't cover up a whole lot. It just kind of evens out your skin tone. Because it's a moisturizer, it is often a dewy finish. This kind of product is really great for really young girls who are just starting out in makeup or other beginners who don't really wear a lot of makeup or don't really need a lot of makeup and just say, you know, I'm good with a tinted moisturizer. I don't need a lot of coverage. This is a really great product for girls like that. I personally like to apply tinted moisturizers just with my fingers because that's how I apply my regular moisturizer and that's just kind of what feels right for me but you can totally do it any other way that you choose to. Unfortunately I did not have a tinted moisturizer specifically to show you guys today but I did have a BB cream which is my next topic and they will look similar when you're purchasing them in a store. So I might as well move straight on to the BB creams. <laughs> BB creams and CC creams are often a little bit more pigmented than a tinted moisturizer but not a whole lot. They're going to do a little bit more to even out your skin tone, maybe even offer a little more coverage, but again, they're not a product that's meant to completely cover everything on your face. They will usually be a very moisturizing and creamy consistency, and another upside that I've read about a lot of them is that they will perk up a dull complexion. My personal favorite thing about BB or CC creams is that most of them have a sunscreen in them, which I think is really great. I like to use BB and CC creams when I'm going out to like an amusement park or a water park and I want to put something on to add a little bit of coverage, but I don't want to do like a full face of makeup. So if I'm going to spend a day at an amusement park, then I'll put on a BB cream, or if I'm just going like to a baseball game or something like that, then I will use a BB cream instead of a foundation. Also, BB creams do not all have to be dewy, which is what brings me to this one, which is the Garnier BB Cream Miracle Skin Perfector. This is a daily shine control one. They do have other ones as well, but this is the one that's specifically made for combination to oily skin and it is the best oily skin BB cream I've ever found. This has a sunscreen in it, but it also helps you to kind of stay a little bit more matte than if you were just to use like a regular BB cream or a tinted moisturizer, which should both leave your face kind of dewy. This helps you to stay a little bit more matte throughout the day. It's oil-free, it's a really great product for oily skin girls. But like I said, they have other products in their line that aren't for oily skin, they're for normal or dry skin that will leave you a little bit more dewy like BB creams normally will, so totally check out their line. I got mine at Walmart, but I know they have them at Target and Walgreens as well, so they have them in quite a few places but this is definitely a great product. A brand that has a good CC cream that I know of in particular is IT Cosmetics, which you can purchase at Ulta. They have a really nice CC cream. I honestly can't remember the name right now. I got it in an Ipsy bag a while back, but um, that's definitely a nice one to try out as well. You can apply BB or CC creams with your fingers, like with the tinted moisturizers as well, but um, my personal favorite way to apply them is with the Ego Tools Skin Perfecting Brush. It is from like a new line that they just came out with, and it says specifically that it's great for BB creams, and I do agree. It's a very nice dense texture, but it's also like slanted. I just personally like the texture of this brush for BB and CC creams. I think it's really good at blending it, especially like in your under eye area. You can also use this with concealers, but that's just personally how I've been applying my BB creams this summer. Totally up to you though how you want to do it. The next type of foundation, I'm not going to talk too long about this just because I don't know a lot about them and so I don't feel like I have a lot of knowledge to give you guys on it, but it is a liquid to powder foundation. This is the L'Oreal Paris Magic Nude Liquid Powder. Um, I did use this for a while. I used to mix it with a BB cream actually because the BB cream was too moisturizing but this was too drying on its own so I used to mix them together. I was pretty happy with those results but um, honestly my issue with the liquid to powder products is that they usually leave you looking very, very cakey. I haven't used this one in about a year, so I'm thinking about maybe giving it another shot, seeing if some of the techniques that I've learned over this last year could help me at all, but um, liquid to powder products are not my favorite, and so I just kind of 
I haven't really learned a lot about them, but I just wanted to mention that as a category in case you guys were interested. So the next category is liquid foundations, just regular liquid foundations. This is probably the most common type of foundation as far as I can kind of tell from the market. They are also definitely the most versatile foundation products. Liquid foundations come in all kinds of coverage, all kinds of finishes, whether you want dewy or you want like absolutely completely matte. Liquid foundations pretty much offer the widest range of products within their category. You can get them very sheer coverage, like a BB cream almost, and you can get them with like almost complete full coverage, which is really great. So definitely it's just a wide range, a huge spectrum of different products that are all within the liquid foundation category. You guys know that my absolute favorite liquid foundation of all time is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Foundation. This is a great line for anybody with oily skin. It's going to help to keep you matte, and there's such a wide color variety variety that a drugstore prices what more could you want like this is so great if you don't have oily skin though the fit me line does have other kinds of products as well they have foundations for if you want to be dewy they have foundations if you're just wanting like regular foundation they have the regular fit me line um, the best thing about this line is that it has such a wide color range another one of my favorites except for the fact that it doesn't help my oily skin at all is the Revlon Photo Ready Makeup Foundation. The thing that I really love about this one is that it comes with a pump, which I think is so much easier when working with liquid foundations, but this is definitely a great one. Like I said, it just wasn't my favorite because it didn't do anything for my oily skin. It didn't really like make it worse, but it didn't make it better, and I'm definitely looking for something to make it better. There are a few different ways to apply liquid foundation. You can use a beauty blender to do it, and I'm so sorry that my brushes and beauty blender are all dirty. Um, brush cleaning day is tomorrow. <laughs> My personal favorite way to apply liquid foundation though is the e.l.f. powder brush. It is just a very, very dense flat top brush. It is only $3. You can get them at Target. I believe you can also get these at Walmart now and some Walgreens. I don't know. My Walmart and Walgreens don't carry e.l.f. products right now, but I know that Target does for sure and this is the greatest foundation brush I've ever used. A lot of beauty gurus here on YouTube will like to tell you that the Sigma F80 Flat Kabuki is the best. Honestly, I think they're fairly comparable and I like the e.l.f. one better because of how big it is. As you can see, like, kind of the difference in, like, this one is so wide, it's got a huge diameter, while this one is a little bit smaller. And I find that having just a little bit wider brush is a lot better personally for me. Maybe it's just because I'm lazy, <laughs> but I find it to be better for applying my foundation. The next category of foundations are kind of cream products. I wasn't really sure how to separate these from the liquids, but these did seem a little bit more creamy than liquidy, so I just made their own category. The first cream product that I have to talk about is a mousse foundation. Now there are so many different types of mousse foundations, like seriously so many. They often offer fairly good coverage and a kind of satiny finish, but there are ones for like matte finish as well, or if you want something dewy, there's all sorts of different kinds. My personal favorite, again, oily skin, is the Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse, and I'm not sure if they make this anymore under this name, but I know that Maybelline Dream line still has a mousse foundation. I don't know if it's the same or not. I honestly haven't tried it since they reformulated it, but as you can see, like, I really loved this product. I've hit pan, or pot. You can totally use a beauty blender with those products as well, but my personal favorite way to apply them is with the Real Techniques Buffing Brush. It is a really nice kind of domed, fluffy, dual fiber buffing brush. It's fairly dense, which is really nice, and I feel like this just works really, really well with the mousse texture like that. The other, like, cream product that I thought I would show you guys is a foundation stick. Stick foundations are often very highly pigmented, very full coverage. I personally don't like using them, however, on my whole face. I think stick foundations make for a better, like, spot coverage sort of thing than, like, an overall face foundation. I just don't personally find that they work as an all-over foundation. But another use for them that some people don't know about is for highlighting and contouring. I like to take the Maybelline Fit Me Shine Free Foundation Stick and I use like a very 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 dark shade and I will use that as like a cream contour especially if I want like a very heavy obvious like BAM contour and basically how I like to apply these is just to apply them straight from the stick or the tube or whatever you want to call it and then I will blend it out with the like bottom part of my beauty blender. That is just personally what I like to do with those. If stick foundations work for you let me know in the comments down below kind of what you use and how you do it because I have never felt like they work as like an all over foundation, so if you've figured out how to use them, then be sure to leave me a note down there. <laughs> Finally, we are at our last kind of category for foundations, and those are powders. 
There are a few different kinds of powder foundations, but I am only featuring two in this video just because they are the most common, um, the most talked about as far as powder foundations go, and so I didn't feel like it was really necessary to talk about some of the other types. The first product is one that everybody has been talking about for ages and ages and ages, and that is a Loose Powder Mineral Foundation. These are very good for sensitive skin and are great at covering up redness, and they often offer a very nice matte finish. I did actually try the whole Bare Minerals line one time. I did, you know, the powder foundation and then the bronzers and the finishing powder and stuff like that. The problem that I had with mineral powder foundations, like the Loose Powder Foundations, is that number one, it doesn't take a whole lot for them to look very cakey. Like, I just felt like I was complete cake face all the time, and I really don't like how that looks. I personally thought that it looked like I was just wearing too much makeup. I just didn't like how it looked on me. Another thing is, if you have any little baby hairs on your face, which, don't even lie, everybody has them. It's not like some weird thing, or like we're all growing mustaches or beards or something like that, but everybody has like general coverings, I don't know, of like baby hairs on their skin. I That sounds really weird now. <laughs> but if you use all powder products, like a powder foundation on your face, it can kind of accentuate those and really like bring them to light so you can see them better, I guess. So that was another thing that I didn't particularly like about this. But if you have sensitive skin or if you are just looking for a very sheer coverage and you're just going to do a very light dusting of the powder, then this is definitely a great product to try out. I mean, they've been successful for like years and years, so definitely Bare Minerals is like the leading company as far as mineral foundations and like powder foundations, stuff like that, so go ahead and give them a try. You can buy their little sets in the Bare Minerals stores or you can go to Ulta, stuff like that, and they will kind of show you the ropes and what to use everything for. The one thing I will say is I do not recommend mineral powder foundation products for mature skin just because as you get older, moisture goes away from your skin anyway. You're starting to lose your moisture and using something that is so mattifying like a powder foundation like that is just going to make it worse. It's going to really settle in your fine lines, accentuate any wrinkles that you have, and again it will just kind of over dry your skin. So it's not a product I would recommend for mature skin. If I am going to be using that kind of powder foundation, my favorite brushes to use are the ones that came with my Little Bare Minerals set. This one is the Flawless Face Brush and this is the full flawless face. These are fluffy but dense, and so that's a really good thing for like a powder foundation product. I think that that's the best way to apply them. Like I said, these came with my Bare Minerals set, so if you go to like a Bare Minerals store or something and ask them what they would recommend, they're gonna know what brushes to use with their products. But if you wanna get something that's like off-brand or whatever you want, any large, fluffy, but still dense brush is going to work perfectly for these kinds of things. The very last foundation type that I have for you guys is a pressed powder foundation. Unfortunately, I don't have one of these to show you guys as an example just because I don't use them personally, but I have some experience with them and I know about them, so I thought I would still include them as a category here. Pressed powder foundations are basically like when you get a powder compact and things are like pressed, it's not like loose powders, when it's pressed, it's going to look like that, but it is a foundation instead of just like a face powder. They are pretty much as matte as matte can be just because it is a powder product and it's very concentrated, so you're getting like as shine free, like oil control, shine control as you can get it. This is often a medium coverage, but that can differ based on like how you apply it, what kind you're using, stuff like that, what it's but definitely, if you have oily skin and you're just really trying to control your shine all day long, this is a good product to look into and maybe invest in. I personally like the feel of liquids better, otherwise I would probably use something like a pressed powder just because I am very oily and I do like to control my shine, but I just personally haven't really gotten into using a pressed powder foundation. As far as brushes and application techniques for a pressed powder foundation, it is kind of the same as the loose powder ones. You want a big and fluffy but still dense brush because it's going to really get in there, offer the coverage that you would get with another kind of foundation like a liquid or a cream or something, but it will also blend away any place that has too much. So that's the best kind of brush to use with either of those powder products. So guys, that is the end of the foundation video. I hope it wasn't too rushed, even though it's a long video, I know. I hope it wasn't too rushed as in like, you felt like I explained it okay. If you felt like I left anything out, please be sure to leave it in a comment down below for me just so I know how to make my videos better in the future. I do plan on doing some other foundation videos outside of Beauty University, but I thought this was a good start to like, kind of give you guys some information about foundations, how to choose them, uh, what skin works best with what. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful in any way, be sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see the rest of my Beauty University videos. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you next time. Bye!